Hello folks. Hope you're doing well. Another quick video for today. Yes, well I just think about the one I've just done actually. Um, we're about the point of I now have excitement and yeah I said on that one which is exciting which is insane and it is it, it blows my mind how on earth me me the person who you know used to sort of go to church with a lot of trepidation you know knowing what I'd see knowing that I'd just be disappointed and knowing that there'd be virtually no chance of me having any experience of God in that church. Even if I prepare well, yeah, praise and worship before I go in there. Yeah, it would just be the usual sort of lukewarm message and, you know, okay worship. You know, so... Yeah, that's been my experience over the last 28 years, hasn't it, really? Um, so never would I have imagined. I mean, the, the only other time that I can remember... Well, that, actually, no, I'm, it, I'll be fair. Um, there were occasions where King's Church in Chatham, Kent, I used to look forward to that. Occasions. There were certainly times when I used to love going to that church in Chatham High Street on the Wednesday lunchtime. That was phenomenal. I used to love that. Absolutely love it. But that wasn't really going to a church meeting. That was going to a a um how would that be described? Um you know, a sort of come together of Christians from different churches. And some fantastic worship. Some really good praise and worship. Praise mainly. Um yeah, very much, yeah. Yeah, you would go out there feeling as if you'd been uplifted. Yeah, that your joy had been uplifted after being in there. So that was good. Well, partly that's what King's Church had for a while. Fantastic worship. Really, really good, you yeah, know, praise and worship group. The musicians practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. Yeah, they became very, very good. And... Yeah, quite often they had visiting speakers who brought meat, not just milk. Um, and so that was exciting for a time. Um, so I have had times, but that was when I was very young. As a believer, you know, the first sort of four or five years, I would guess. But certainly, um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely say over the last 20 years, then... Yeah, the only time that I have actually gone to church with any form of um, you know, looking forward to it was concerning Mrs. B. Yeah, going back um, to about September the twenty fifth when that love for her came into me, and I believe that she was my wife. Yeah, it's a case of going to church was. So I look forward to because of the fact that it would be another chance to see her and maybe speak to her and maybe start building that relationship that I was spending time talking to God about. Yeah. And, yeah, so, yeah. But that has an ulterior motive because it really was about seeing Mrs. B. It wasn't about... Um, going to church and about seeing what God wanted to do. Whereas that is the situation now and yeah. I <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm quite um as I say, the the change in me. Well I, for anyone who doesn't understand, um from my time in care I've always been someone who wanted to help people who sort of I used to counsel people and stuff like that um, but I was always someone who wanted to help people so of course then becoming a Christian 
and having an understanding of the spiritual and understanding of God, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, I saw this possibility of helping people in a much, much bigger way. And so going to church when church was incredibly inward looking and you know, not really bothered about the gifts of the Spirit, not really bothered about praying for people. and Or you know, when you're praying for people and it doesn't work, going to God and saying, why isn't this working? Just just continuing to lay hands upon, as, as I've said before, the young lady in, I think it was a Baptist church that I was in, um, who had been prayed for, for an ear problem, over 90 times. Yet idiots, basically, had laid hands on her without consulting with God. 90 times people had done that. 90 bloody times people, oh. That's what I say. So in the past, my experience was, oh, this is so bloody annoying. How can people not see this? How can people not understand that they're doing damage? They're not doing any good if they're doing that. They're doing damage. How can they not understand that? How can you just go blindly onwards? I said the other day, carry on regardless. You know, that's okay for a comedy in the 1970s. But it's not okay for a church to have that attitude. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I was coming up against all the time. Boom, 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 boom. Um, for all those years. And so church was a nightmare. I'd go into churches and I could see immediately what was wrong and what they weren't doing, what they should be doing and what they should be doing. And what they were doing, you know, that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. What they should be doing that they weren't and that sort of thing. Yeah. And it made being in a church really difficult. Because generally speaking, yeah, people don't like to be told that the way they're doing things is wrong. They don't. And the way I was, certainly in the past, is I could be... My, my heart was sort of, sort of, the same as what it is now, with regards to that. Yeah, I'd say things because I wanted to help. But the way I'd say things come across as born in a china shop sort of thing. Um, I would often um, point out the problem before saying what the solution would be. Um, and people didn't like that. They saw that purely as criticism and they didn't like it. They, they had no interest in that whatsoever. And so for me, that was incredibly frustrating to say the least, immensely so. Um, so, yeah. You know, why the difference now? Well, because I had the stand. I had God working in me during that, and I've had God working in me since that. And I'm not the same person now. And I think the way I do things is very, very different now. Well, because one element that was missing from what I was doing before was love. So even though I wanted to help, even though it was all about helping, it was never really, I, I never wanted to simply criticize people for the for the sake of criticizing them. Certainly never wanted to do that to make myself look better because, you yeah, know, I've always known me and I've always known that, well, no, that isn't the case. Um, but sometimes may have come across that way. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Of course. So, yeah. Now it's, well, as I say, now it's very much a case of saying, okay, Father, yeah, I don't want to say anything unless you open a door for me to say something. And even then, you yeah, know, I need you to help me to stop talking when I'm supposed to stop talking. Yeah. Because it doesn't really serve a purpose if I just talk for the sake of talking. Um, yeah, if I've got stuff to give that's worth anything, then 
ideally speaking, I need to just give that and walk away. Yeah, because what you want, if, <laughs> if you've got something of worth, then give that and say, God bless, walk away. Leave them just with that so they can focus on that. So they can see that. Because if you give that and then you go and say loads of other stuff and some of the other stuff you say is a bit wrong, they could focus on the wrong that you've said rather than on the good thing, on the thing of worth. Because you've added a ton of other stuff to it, which is not helpful. Same as these. Same as these videos. It's the same thing, really. You know, to get to the point of sharing what's of worth and getting rid of all the other stuff. Because the other stuff only works as a distraction to take your focus away from the, that thing that's of worth. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's... Yeah. To, to a certain degree, like the, the chap I met last night is from the Banff um, Church. Um, he's a young Christian. Yeah. And he's got incredible enthusiasm and expectations and joy about going to a meeting. I'm a young son of God now. So I'm a baby again. I said this back in June in the June, didn't I, beginning of July, that I'm now a baby again, and now I have to learn to walk as this now, as a son of God. So, yeah. And so, yeah. I'm having to learn to walk in this. Because obviously that there is a part of me that, that sometimes just wants to scream out at people and just let what God has been doing in my life just come out. But that's not God's will or God's way. And if God wants to do things in a certain way, then okay. That's cool. Yeah, of course. It is about his will and his way. It's about understanding that my will didn't work. And if it didn't work then, it's not going to work now. So even though there may be part of me that just wants to scream this stuff out, that's not the way God wants things to be done. Yeah, he wants things to be done gently. He wants me to be loving and you know, to always speak in love to the people. And to see them as... You know, children of God that God loves immensely and yeah that's different now yeah that's why the key to me was asking that question father who are you and who am I because that also taught me who all these other people are so there you go I'm going to leave you to it you take care God bless I'll speak to you soon have a wonderful weekend and be blessed in all that you do. I'll speak to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.